Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we've got the uh, Euro making a run up here. Uh, I was going to go on and, and cover, uh, you know, the, the way that uh, the Euro traded uh, post FOMC release and why I traded it, you know, skimming a little bit off as we went lower as opposed to just hanging on for a much, you know, bigger move. Uh, <clears throat> now, obviously, now that looks pretty obvious why that would have been the right way but I was thinking about that when I got up I got up very early um, in the European session this morning so we're going to move into the charts uh, quickly obviously we've got some key moves happening in not only the euro dollar also a uh, dollar CAD uh, crude oil Aussie dollar uh, even the copper markets had a pretty nice run up here so let's go on and move into those quickly I tweeted out this chart here on the year dollar. This uh, 1335 is a a key level, uh, but we, you know, like I said, the idea is that we've we've certainly gone and moved moved past uh, from uh, the the pullback that we saw in the uh, you know after the release of the FOMC minutes. And at this point now, I mean, 1335 is key, and I tweeted that chart out about an hour and a half ago, and we we got up to I think it was like. 1345-ish, and we pulled back about a good 25 or 28 pips from there, but now we've reasserted ourselves and made a newer high, and we're just holding up here against this 3035. Uh, I know some people have tried to go and short it up here as we moved here, but you have to respect the fact that it's above this 1283, and that uh, also what 50 pips likes to refer to as the Friday flows. We don't really, this isn't necessarily as much a Friday flows issue where, you know, one mark, one uh, side, in this case the bulls, have the, the stronger hand uh, where the market may have been, you know, pushing one way and then another way. In this case, the market was kind of all over the place most of the week, but in a relatively tight range. And we came down here to the 1172, the market defended that. And look like we would probably break eventually lower. When we move back into this 1283 uh, bias pivot, we faded against that. We held the 1212 uh, that I had on this level. I think we just took it out by a couple of pips, if that much. And we came back, and the market started asserting itself. And we got all the way up to 1307, and we faded back and challenged the zone here at 1240. And then we got the move yesterday, which was a bit of a surprise. And the market, you know, it was a uh, you know, thin activity, so to speak, going into FOMC. And uh, initially I thought it was in the European, uh, the Asian session, but it was actually take place in the European session. But I got up a little bit late yesterday thinking that uh, there probably wouldn't be a lot of action, uh, you know, ahead of FOMC. So they use that thin period or thin volume period to just go and hit a bunch of stops up here, which they eventually faded, which it looked initially to be bearish. And then, of course, then we got the FOMC release, uh, and then the market, you know, like I said, we saw this rally up in here. And this was the rally preceding that, uh, you know, the FOMC. This was what happened here during the European session. And then this was uh, in the uh, FOMC release, and it looked like probably the, the goose was cooked here for Euro bulls, and I'll be doggone if they didn't come back again and reassert themselves. And I, what I got, that we were just breaking into this, higher move we just come up i think we we're trading here and we just started to take off and i'm like i'm just going to sit back and watch this thing i always like to play it cautious on friday i'll trade on fridays but the key thing is i always like to feel like i've got an edge and so that's why i want to focus and get back on to the why i traded it now obviously when you look at this where the market is now you can easily look back in retrospect and say well yeah that made sense to trade it that way but obviously when I came in, I think the euro was only trading like below 13. And I, I thought I'll go in and focus the show on how and why I traded the market. I was pretty uh, uh, open about where I put all my positions, where I took off from my positions. Some people asked me for targets. I provided that. And my last uh, trade I got out uh, was uh, one at 1264. And I tweeted that out, that there was support there. And that was actually from the, the first uh, short I did later on in the day. And I tweeted that out that I'd be selling it at 1275. 
So we'll kind of go into that, and then we'll also cover these other markets because um, we actually have some stuff happening, but I thought that was kind of key. Obviously, it doesn't look as key now in retrospect in a lot of the activity we had, but let's go and jump into the 30-minute quickly and just kind of explain that, and I'll move into that and try and uh, give a little better explanation what I'm alluding to. So I've been a Euro bear on this, and things have played out, you know, relatively well for the most part. So, you know, we got that that rally, uh, you know, here in the uh, FOMC. And actually, like I said, there's a lot of action today, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time into this. But I thought it was it was key because uh, probably some people would think, well, you know, if you were bearish a Euro, and initially I came in here, I'd uh, was uh, able to, uh, after we had that run, I was able to go and get short when we lost to 12.82. And I was able to cover here at, I think it was like 12.45. And I, I think I, I tweeted that out at the time or mentioned it to Blake on there. I really don't remember. But I did clear that I was, uh, you know, I was flat here. So I was selling it against this 12.75, which is a 50%. Everything looked good in the hood uh, with uh, us losing the 12.83 area. And then we worked up higher, and it got up to like uh, 1298, I think. I sold it at 1296, and right before the release, I covered. It got a great fill. I think it was like 1275 or something like that. I mean, I covered it like about five seconds before the release. I tweeted that out, and I really added it back on at 1296, and we get we get the market gets blown up here. And initially, it didn't make it up to right, right up to 1327. I think it 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 first got up to. 1322, I think, and it backed down to 1306 or something. I covered there, and I got reshort again up here. Now, what I want to get to is some people might have thought, well, if you thought it was going to go work lower, then why didn't you just sell it at 1320 and like you did? Okay, fine, if you covered that one at 1308. It bounced back up. Why don't you sell it and just hang it, hang on all the way down to what you were thinking, that it would go down to 1260, uh, you know, at least 1260, uh, 1264 or better, then why not just hang on? And you know what? That does make a lot of sense um, in an overall, you know, generally the way you would trade. But my thinking is not only was it an economic release, which it's not an economic event, but I'm saying the FOMC minutes release, uh, I had to respect the fact that the market had been holding above this 1283 so many times and that they had been buying the dips all the way across the entire week. We talked about how this, uh, at least on the two-hour chart, it's 11.72, obviously on the 30 minutes, 11.76, how I thought they'd break and we'd be down here, you know, getting way past 11.50, and I thought we'd make it down to 11.31. And so they held and defended this, and we made this run up to 12.82, and then ultimately, it, you know, the market had pulled back. But like I said, the market just kept reasserting itself to the upside, and these Euro bulls were not one to go and give up. Now, yesterday was key because I thought, you know, I think the FOMC minutes are not going to be dovish to the extent that some people thought. I think it's going to be, you know, uh, dollar bullish. That being said, I still had to re respect the fact that they're above 1282. And these bulls just keep buying this dip, buying this dip, buying this dip. So I was already short from 1276, um, and then I got added on the 1296, but I got out, but I added it back on at 1296, and we get moving, we get clipping up here for a very nice, you know, vice run here. So if this market could go and hold above 1282, and let's say it was like today's actually close up here, I was going to take losses against the 1276, the 1296, and then uh, also the ads up there in, uh, I'm trying to think, I had the, the, obviously the 1320, but I had, all together I had four different positions. I'm trying to remember the, the, the fourth position I had on. But the key thing was, I'd obviously be taking losses because if they held here, if they wouldn't even come back from 1330 and they get blown up here, I'd have to go in and bail out of those positions. So I said, you know, I'm, I'm above this level and I keep saying it's a bias pivot. How can I act like that level doesn't count all of a sudden? Now, going into the the minutes release, I said 1283 doesn't mean crap in the sense that the market can jerk around right before the release because they're going to play those reindeer games and 
you know, bid it up, then they can sell it off real hard. Like they didn't sell off that hard, but they sell sold it off about a good uh, tw almost 25 pips right at the moment of the release. I thought that would actually happen ahead of that time, and I used that time to get out. I said, you know, I don't want the exposure just in case because um, I already have the 1276 and or actually 1275. So once we got up here, and I was surprised. I thought we could make it up to 1305. 1307, but I thought they'd pull back. So as much to my surprise, when they just kept on going and start making this move, you know, much, much higher, and I stepped in and sold it, I think it's 1321, 1320. I thought, okay, they're going to pull them back, and when they got down to 08, I went and covered them. I go, you know, what I want to do is, if I'm going to take a loss, let me go in and take advantage of these run-ups and then make some money there, and that way, even if I ultimately take a loss, at least I'll have made some money from here, 13.20 to 08. And if it holds at 13, well, then fine. Then I'll just go on and, and take the loss on. If it keeps on working higher, ultimately I'll take the loss at 76 and 96. So when we made it back up here, I resold again. But what I did was I was managing the position all the way down because what I was doing is instead of, like I said, some people might have thought, well, that's stupid. If you thought it was going to come down to towards 1260, why didn't you just hang on? The reason I didn't hang on because, like I said, I had to respect the fact that they, they were above that 1282. And I knew that that was going to be defended. So when we made that run back down to 13, I covered it, uh, I think it was 13 even or 1301. And then I still had the 1296. I covered that one when we tested towards this 1283, which was uh, actually covered, I think it was at 1285. Ultimately, like I said, uh, I tweeted about, uh, and I think I tweeted the chart, that I was looking for 12.64, and that was uh, support on a, on a five-minute, and we got down to, I think it was 12, well, I guess we made it down to 12.62. And anyway, I had the limit there, so I didn't have to worry about it. And boom, I was out, and I haven't done anything. So let's fast forward to this morning. So this morning, that's why I thought, you know, I'm going to spend a whole lot of time explaining, you know, of some more details about what was happening. But then all of a sudden, like I said, the euro started taking off. And here we are now. And the, and you have to be careful selling this because you the bulls are in control and you can't change the fact. And let's go on and, and move back into the two hour. And I'm trying to rush. I'm talking a little bit fast, but probably faster than normal, although I do talk fast, is because there's other markets to go on and cover. And a lot of stuff is happening right now. But I thought that was key to go and share just so you can understand or, or, or and I wouldn't say understand, that you see that there's, uh, you sometimes you have to change gears up a little bit. And there's different ways you're going to go and trade. Normally, yeah, if I thought that that was going to make a move and I thought the euro was cooked, then that would make sense to hold those positions until like 1283 at least instead of jumping in and out. But I knew that, hey, I'm on the wrong side of the tracks. And until this thing really works lower, I have to respect what's going on. And that's why I ended up you know, covering those positions. Now, here's the thing. If you're trying to sell this market, they finally got above. Look, this is, look at all these moves above 1283. We get this one bar. And we, I remember this clearly. I think this was a Friday. Yeah, it was a Friday. And we get above it, but we quickly lose it. And I remember saying, hey, look, we lost it. That's key, blah, blah, blah. And we sold off. Now, here's another challenge of 1283, they can't get above it. Here's a challenge above 1283, and they close, but they quickly lose it, okay? And then we had, yesterday, we had a close above 1283, but we, you know, I was saying yesterday, I said, you know, technically it's above there, but I'm going to say from a subjective standpoint, I don't believe in it because I don't think there's anything that's justifying it. It's because it's in thin activity, blah, blah, blah. So even though it had a consecutive close, I was doubting it. And plus, you had to look at this, this close. It was a Greystone Joji. Okay, a little bit long, but still close enough for a Greystone Joji. And we saw the market pull back. Okay? And we just can't hold anything. Look, all these challenges above 1283, we can't close above them. Well, now, look, we got a solid close above 1283. And not only that, We've taken out the NFP highs, which were 1318, and we're well, and we and we took out in one full blow. We got a close above 1283, and we also closed above the NFP highs of 1218. Now the market is even still showing strength here, and unless unless you get a close below this low, 
all that does is it just neutralizes the move. People are still going to be trying to buy this on the on any pullbacks. I was trying to share that with people. Is that you know, and also on a Friday, one thing about FX is it it responds in a different way because you also have a lot of retail traders and lots of times they're forced to go and close their positions. But you know what things that makes this weekend this week a little bit different is generally you get a situation like this. Let's say that we're looking at the euro here, and because uh, the market may have had a very nice run up. There'll be a lot of Euro bulls, and they'll be thinking we're going to the moon, 120. And as we pull back, they're like, "Oh, this is a fantastic." And let's say that this is on a Monday. Let's just give an example. Um, so this is on a Monday, and they get up here, and the you know the the Euro bulls are, are you know drunk with with you know happy anticipation. We're going to 118. We're going to 120, and so forth. And so. Any pullbacks here, let's say we're coming into Tuesday, they're buying it. Ah, this is fantastic. Um, I'm really going to make bank on this move. So uh, <clears throat> the market drops down into Wednesday, and they're going, well, I'm not worried about it. It's coming into some key support, and I'm buying this thing. And look, it's already rallied up. I'm already up. So we come into Thursday, and the market takes a dip. And they're like, well, it's a little bit concerned, but we'll see what happens. Okay. This is what I'm talking about when you get the Friday flows because the people that are on the wrong side of the market, you draw a trend line here and they broke the trend line and then these people that came in and ended up buying on Monday and Tuesday, they're on the wrong side of the tracks. So by the time we're coming in late into Thursday and rolling into Friday, they're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to get out. So that's what, we, what 50 pips likes to refer to as the Friday flows. So you see that market continue to accelerate into that move. Okay, this week's different in that the market's been all choppy. So bulls haven't had a control really, although they they've been they've been able to push the market, and bears certainly haven't had a control uh, with with the market. You know, overall, so there really isn't that that sense of what you see here, where people are basically being forced out of their positions. They bought way too high, way late in the game, and they even added some more, and now they're forced to basically puke it up as you come into Friday. It's a little bit different with this move because we've chopped back and forth, and really the way to play this has been to just day trade it slash scalp it because you're not being rewarded for holding on to your moves. <clears throat> that being said, you have to respect the technicals. And one thing about FX, uh, especially in FX traders, is they're going to repeat. It's the same thing with spoofs to a certain extent, but FX traders are creatures of habit in the sense that they'll look at to what recently worked and they'll keep on doing it. So what's been working this week? Buying those dips. Now we they haven't been rewarded as far as big rallies have mounted, but you've known that as long as you buy these dips, the market's going to bounce back. The it's like a it's a, like a ball that's not inflated very much. It might not bounce back a whole lot, but it's still going to bounce. So the market just keeps coming back, and that's why yesterday. Uh, euphemistically refer to the euro bulls as cockroaches in the sense that you can't kill them off. In the you know, like I said, if uh, I tweet that out, if, if a meteor hits the earth, the only thing that's going to be left is cockroaches and euro bulls because they're so relentless. And so the thing is that it keeps coming back. So the the even if someone's a bull and they're buying it and they're not getting rewarded big time, but they're still, you know, let's say they're, they're up like 45 pips and they end up having to jump out of the trade with only 18 pips. But the thing is, they still keep jumping out with something. They know that if they buy it, they're going to get rewarded. They buy it, they're going to get rewarded. They buy it. They may end up, maybe after two or three times, they learn their lesson and say, you know what, every time it's up 35 pips, I'm going to take this stuff. And maybe they give it a chance again and it pulls back and they're, you know, only get 22 pips or 15 pips, I'm like, ah, uh, you know, I'll learn my lesson next time. I'll make sure I do this. But the thing is, they're still getting rewarded for stepping in and buying this thing. But you have to respect the fact that they closed above this key pivot. And I'm a Euro bear, but the thing is, you can't be dogmatic to the sense that you don't. I used to be that way. That you're like, no way, it'll never happen. It can't, it won't. Yes, it can. And one thing about the Euro, it responds exceptionally well to technicals. So if it gets above this level, you can't get in the way of this market. You know what I'm saying? It's like I had that 1335 level here in the European session here, 
And we stopped before that 35 and we backed off a decent amount. And then we got up to 45 up here <clears throat> and we backed off about 22 pips or 27 pips. And now here we are back here. But there's a time to go in and, and tangle with the market. And there's a time not necessarily to tangle with the market. And my concern is these bulls have worked so hard that once we get here at this point, the, you can try and fade it. But my thinking would be is there's, you know, you can probably fade it on the first move, maybe the second move. We're actually working now towards the third move up here. People are not, are, what happens is I'm thinking, no, this is crazy. It won't make it up this high. But at some point, you're going to get other people that are bears next to you, and they're like, uh, see you, dude. You go first, not me. And you're going to get less and less people that want to fight this. So that, get, that it's going to be the path of least resistance where this market can get scooting. Now, I think this 1365 is pretty key. You look at it, you see here? 1365. Now, if you want to do some, if you want to do some action here, that's a level to do some action. You see, 1365. You come up here. There's a minor uh, pause. Excuse me, I had to clear my throat. I had a frog in my throat. But anyway, so 1365 is a, is a, is a great level to go on and and do a little bit of action. You can see just a minor pause here on the way up to the epic run up here to 1713. But on the way back down, they find support here for a bounce. Bounce looks like about, what, 100 pips or something like that. It comes back down and we break through it. And the good thing about this thing is at this level is when we break through it, you see a very nice follow through. Good for about you know, I don't know, maybe like, uh, looks like about, um, like maybe 85 pips or something like that, but a pretty good follow through. And then you see a rebound back into this 1365 and then a fade here. So this showing, you know, the 1365 is pretty significant. Uh, cause like I said, you got to bounce, you get, you come down here, you basically bounce off a very nice bounce off of about close to hundred pips. You come back and when you slide through it, you see very good follow through on the slide about, you know, same thing like about, you know, 85 pips or so. So you get this bounce back and it's rejected and the follow through is very nice follow through. Okay. So we come back to this 1365 and now that's resistance and it turns the market away. Okay. Once you get past 1365 on the way up, we get, you know, booting, scooting on up here to 1455. We come back and on the way back, it pauses 1365, but once it fails, you see very nice follow through. So 1365, I think is where the market is going to go to. And so I always like to feel like I've got an edge if I'm going to take the other side, especially if I'm going counter trend, meaning that I like to think, okay, I'm coming into an exceptional um, level and an exceptional fib, and I just don't see that here. You see, we've already gone past the 61 percent, and we're not even back it. We're not even backing away. So my guess is this 1365 is going to be key. Now, 1381 is the 78%. And a lot of people that have, um, were bullish, or even those that have been, you know, pragmatic, have said, hey, you know, we can make it up to 114. So this makes sense. 1365 is a huge level. But on maybe on an overshoot, we can come up here and fail at this 1392, and 1381 is a 78%. If I'm going to be bearish to Euro and the market's, you know, moving away from that, then, okay, I can look at what are the economic reports on the horizon and I can say, you know, I can make a case where we'll probably run out of gas, not only this 1365, uh, 1381's to 78%. Let's see it overshoot. I'll be willing to, to tangle with it up here. But like I said, they've done a crap load of work in here. You see? So really what you'd be looking at
we'd be looking at an extension. So watch, let's take a look at this. So they all right, you know, we, we do have this 1347, which is 127% <clears throat> of this move here from 1297 down here to 1112. I probably want to see it pull back even lower from here. But you can see that they're, they're having some trouble right in here. Again, it's also you got the 1350, but that 1365 is staring you in the face big as Dallas. So I am of the ilk that they'll make a run to the 1365. I would not be surprised if they make a run to the 1365 before the end of the day. And it just makes sense. Because anybody that's sold here, they're probably going to be capitulating if the market won't pull back. If they're saying, well, I only put it on as a day trade. Um, maybe I better just get out and take my lumps here. And one thing about the euro, it's known for making significant highs or lows, although I can't say this is significant because they've been doing so much work here. But they've been known for taking a key, what do you want to call it, swing low, swing high, significant high, significant low <clears throat> on a Monday. So my guess is if, I, if I'm saying, I don't care, I think the year is a piece of crap, it's going lower, nobody's going to tell me different, then I'm, I'll be more willing to tangle with this cat on a Monday, knowing that I've got, I don't want to be holding this thing over the weekend. If it closes up here on the 1330, and then we go into the Sunday session, it's, it's you know, clipping along, you're like, well... That's a Sunday session. That doesn't count. Anything can happen. Then you roll into the European session. Now we're already up to the 1380s, and now you're down like 50 pips when you didn't even have to be down 50 pips. That's what I'm saying. I'd, I'd rather err on the side of caution. I was telling people, I was mentioning someone, I go, you know, if it fails up here, I go, now it's actually at the, at the time it's 1337. I go, fails up here, I go, uh, it'll do it without me. I'm not going to be part of it because I'm going to respect the fact it's above 1283. I've learned the hard way is if you don't respect the technicals on the euro, you get your rear end handed to you. I mean, y'all can do what you want, but I'm just saying is, you know, like I said, I was going to focus the bulk of the show on how and why I traded the way I traded the euro dollar post FOMC. And at the time, like I said, euro was trading pretty quiet. So it made a whole lot of sense to focus a lot of time on that. But now in retrospect, it looks like, well, yeah, that was obvious why you traded it that way. But it wasn't that obvious yesterday. You see what I'm saying? But I was respecting the fact that, hey, hey, bozo, it's above your, your bias pivot. How can you say I'm going to hang on for a gigantic payday when it's above your bias pivot? And that's why I kept covering my shorts. I was selling it up here and covering my shorts respecting what the market was doing. I go, until it's above. And that's why one of my last positions I was covered, I covered it at 1285, right just ahead of this bias pivot, because I had to respect the fact that it's above the bias pivot. How can I say that the bias pivot is so key, and then when it works against me, it's not key at all? I mean, I mentioned that it didn't mean anything leading up to the FOMC in the last you know 45 minutes. Yeah, they can move the market anywhere they want. But at the end of the day, that 1283 is going to be key, and you can see here now we're working hard. My guess is we'll make a run to 13, right up here to 1365. That makes the most sense at this point. Now 13, we'll throw the fib back on here. If it gets a little stupid and you're saying, I don't give a rats, whatever, I still want to short it, then fine. Step in here at 1381 to 78% of 1104 to 1459. But you just better be careful with this thing. That's all I'm saying. So let's go and move into a couple of other markets. I think we're actually already at time for break, so we're going to take a break now. Uh, look, at, And here's another one. I, I mean, I'm so glad. Actually, it worked to my benefit that I was wrapped up with the year dollar because I already said I'd be selling this thing at 72.60 if it got up here. Well, it did, but I was already involved with the euro, and I was like, man, I'm doing the same counter trend. It's above the the uh above the, uh, I'm talking about the euro, above the 1283, I better watch what I'm doing. But I told you all about the, and here was my, my fib here, and the market did pull back. I said, hey, well, you can probably catch yourself about 70 pips or so. And we did see a very nice pullback from the 7225 area here. 
But like I said, we talked about the Aussie doll and I told you that each of the pairs has their own personality the way they trade. And one thing about the Aussie doll, it's a trending market. Look at this sucker. It's blowing and going. There is some resistance here at 73.36, and we'll take a look at that right here. But there's flurries of resistance here at 73.61, 73.81. The real key resistance here is right around 74.40, 74.14. Like I said, I've learned the hard way with this one too, is you got to be careful. Like I told you before, Euro is very forgiving because it's a two-way market. This Aussie dollar, once it gets going, once the train leaves the tracks, believe me, you will have to chase that train down the tracks. It's not forgiving the way that Euro dollar is. I mean, obviously, Aussie dollar is extremely oversold, but this is just like, you know, like a reverse avalanche. It just keeps on going. So, and you can, you know, you're seeing some other stuff because gold is above 1150. And also, Copper's had this nice run up here. So we're going to go in and take a break now, and then we'll come back for uh, you know to cover some other markets. So thanks for uh, joining us here on the European crossover. We can see here that the Canadian dollar also is benefiting from this you know this move that you're seeing here in some of the commodity markets and what's happening with the dollar. You got to respect this stuff. I'm saying the key thing is you have to admit when you're wrong. And say, you know, and even I've said, you know, I'm not wrong. The thing, key things is, you know what? Like today, I don't understand why Euro was up at those levels when it started making it up above 1320. If you don't understand something, then just don't be in the market. And guess what? I'm not in the market. I have no positions on. I'm totally flat right now. I had a very good week. I'm not going to make no stupid, dumbass mistakes. That's it. You don't have to be in the market every day. And right now, the Euro is you know, moving higher. So we'll go in and, and take a quick break and we'll catch you on the other side. Let me just mark this off. Okay, everybody, uh, welcome back to the uh, European crossover webinar. And I did go in and uh, tweet is that um, I'm going to go on and uh, I'll be willing to go on and fade it. Obviously, we stopped here at this right before this 1365. I'll go on and cut, step in here at this 1381 and uh, be looking to go on and fade, fade it. I mean, I might let it run up to like 1382, 83. Uh, you know, like I said, it's, you know, honestly, it's, it's really inexcusable for people that try to step in and sell this thing. It really is. I'm saying is you're not respecting the market. That's what you're doing. You're, you're just saying, I don't care. I don't care what the technicals are. I don't care. I'm bigger than the market. And you can't do you can't do that with Euro. You can't do that. I'm just saying this. I, I learned the hard way. And when I share something, it's not because I know. I share because I've had my rear end kicked before a few times by the Euro. So I learned you can't go in and do that. You just don't ignore that. And it's on a Friday and the market's been working its butt off. You know, the 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 Euro bulls have been stepping in and buying it and buying it and buying it and, and they're not getting they're not getting I don't want to say thwarted back. I'm saying they're not dismayed. Every time they they you knock them down, they dust themselves off, they pick themselves up and they make another run. You knock them back down, they dust themselves, they pick them up. You knock them back down again, they dust themselves, they pick and you're thinking you're gonna keep on whipping these guys and you're crazy. It's just, it's, it, you know, to me, it smacks of hubris to go and say, I don't care. It's above 1283. You know what? I don't care. I don't care. And you're not respecting the market. That's essentially, it's it. So, you know, I mean, I, I put on here, I go, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll fade it here at 1381 while y'all puke into this level. And usually I'm not that much of an a-hole, but, you know, we talked all week long about this 1283 and no, and y'all didn't respect it. And now the market's teaching you a good lesson about not respecting it. So anyway, here's the dollar CAD and it's dropping too. I mean, I tweeted out, I go, this 2943 was a bounceable area. It bounced for just a very short pip and uh, actually it already bounced at the time when I noticed it. And now here it is even selling up beyond that. I mean, Beyonce, I don't even, even I don't even get this. 
But the thing is, you don't fight it. You just don't want to step in and say, I don't care. What I'm saying is, I think that, uh, I ultimately think, I said before, ultimately, I think that the dollar cap is going to 28.50, and there's 28.63. That's what I was saying. I go, ultimately, it's going to 28.50. I've been saying that for a while, and like I said, I hear a lot of people talking about it back then. You know what? I was the one who was talking about the dollar cat here making a cyclical high on Friday, NFP day, or Monday. And I said that on Wednesday. But by that time, the, Euro, the dollar cat was already pulling back. I was talking about a cyclical high. And I said we would ultimately go down to, I think it's 28.50. I might have said 27.50. Try to remember which one it probably was. We can look at here because I would have done it technically speaking. Yeah, no, I'm looking for 2750. That's it. That's what I was looking for, ultimately. 2750. That being said, I didn't expect it to get get here in a, in a week and a half or a week. So I do expect bounces, and we had a very nice bounce for this 2975 area. And we actually made it down to that 2959 that I was really looking for. And the market bounced like, I don't know, 50 pips or something like that. But we're continuing to sell off. And that's what I'm saying. As you go into a Friday, you're going to have people capitulate. And that's what I'm saying. You have to respect the markets the way the market, you know, it's action here. So, like I said, and here's one of the things that I do is I look around, like let's say in the case with the euro. I look around, I'll say, well, what's the euro doing against the pound? Here we are right here, man, this 73.97 here, the euro pound. I go, okay, like, what's happening with the euro pound? What's happening with the euro yen? We could go into that. I'm just saying as an example, what's happening with the euro yen? Look at this. This thing's blowing and going, too. You see? It's coming up to 36.72. I don't trade it, but I keep an eye on what's going on. Okay, like, what's going on with euro odd? And it's fading, but of course we know that the odd is doing very well. But what, what I was trying to lead to is how's the dollar doing against everything else? Like, like when I'm looking at the euro, I say, am I seeing euro strength only against the dollar, or is it coming up against all the other currencies? And if it's going, and is it like I'll give you an example. Let's say with euro yen, if I saw that the market had already rallied to this level, but it was already fading off pretty quick, then I'd say, okay, well then. Potentially, the euro is going to run out of gas or whatever. But I look at also like, how's the dollar doing? Well, it's doing pretty crappy against the euro cad. I mean, against the dollar cad. Uh, and then I look at, at the Aussie dollar. Well, how's it doing against the Aussie dollar? Oh my God, it looks even worse. I'm saying this so that gives me a temperature check for me to go on and trade to figure out what's going to happen, you know, up in here. Now, like I said, I pointed out this 1365, and we're pulling back. But the market can overshoot, and that's why I'm like, yeah, you know, I could say I'm gonna try and fade 1365, and we pulled back with only a couple of pips. We'll have to see how much other people need to puke. We may not get much higher until Monday, and Monday can be a key level. So, but like I said, if it does this today, I think there'll be a lot of puking. Then I'll fade 1380, thinking I'll take advantage of the puke, and you know, of the, these guys and gals puking. And then I'll step right on in. I'll fade it against that, and maybe we'll pull back it to like the 1340 or something. So I'll be able to grab like 40 pips. Take advantage of their woes because they didn't want to pay attention to, and not me, but pay attention to the market that this 1283 was a huge pivot. And once you got above it, and then we talked about this bar. This bar closed above the NFP highs of 13, uh, 1318. People were just totally disrespect that stuff. And the thing is, the market remembers those levels. There's a reason why I mark these levels off, because it helps me remember. Now, I remember the high on NFP day was 1318. So when the market closes above that, you can see right here in this bar, that's significant. And now, look at that. It's just continuing to keep on going. So trying to stand in this way is ludicrous in my book. Unless you come in, like I said, with a level and a fib, confluency. So you got a major level here. We talked about this. This is 1365. We talked about the market stalling a little bit here. It takes off to 1713. It comes back to uh, 1365. It holds. You get a nice bounce of almost 100 pips. When we lose 1365, we get very nice follow-through. We come back and test it. We fail, and then it 
accelerates the time to the downside. So you know 1365 is pretty key. And that's why you see here this high, and we pull back. We got above it and that launched us, but once we lost it again, it, it, it really accelerated to the downside. So that's key, and it's it, you can see where the market would fade that. I, if it wasn't a Friday, I'd be fading right in here. But because it's a Friday, and we have to wait till we come into the New York session and see how much those guys and gals want to puke, then I'll be looking here at this 1380. We've got this level here, and 1381 is 78% of 1104 to 1459. And as y'all puke into it, I'll take the other side. I'm not trying to be an a-hole, but so many people literally disrespected the price act in the euro, and they're getting spanked good but good. And it's just there was no reason to go on and do that. And it didn't even make any sense because the thing is also you, it's, it's the people that don't respect news. They're the ones that are getting their, their rear end handed to them. Because if the euro is here after the FOMC minutes, that's freaking huge then. It's telling you something. Because it's here in line, you know, it, it got past the FOMC minutes, and now the euro's like it's still going. It's above a key level. We uh, above this bias pivot. It 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 it, it, it survived the FOMC minutes, and, and it, it closed lower. And someone had asked me because I mentioned about the twelve eighty three. I go, this is very key. It lost the twelve eighty three, and, and a guy tweeted to me, and he goes, "Yeah," and he goes, uh, "I got to give it to you there," and he goes, "That's pretty bearish." And I go, "You know, you would think, huh?" But these Euro bulls, they're freaking relentless, and you have to respect that. That's what I'm saying. The good traders are going to know the markets keep repeating themselves, and they always go with what recently worked. And what's recently worked has been keep buying this Euro. I've been Euro bearish, but the thing is I keep taking the money real fast like I did post FOMC minutes release is because I know not only was I on the wrong side of the tracks because, uh, because the market was above 1283, but the penchant of this week has been they just keep buying these dips. No matter how bad the news gets, the Euro bulls keep buying those dips. And so if you're not respecting that, you, you know, go ahead, don't respect it. But you know what? There's other guys and gals that are pretty smart, and they recognize that, and they're taking your money from you. They're taking your lunch money. And some of you just don't re realize it. Well, here's a cable up here at 53.81, the 50% of this move of 51.05 to 56.58. We're struggling a little bit. And, you, you, know, if you're a, you know, the sad thing is if you're a dollar bull at this point, you're, you're grabbing like a, like a drowning man will grab a, he'll grab a, a blade of grass if you throw it out to him. He'll grab it. So there's probably your dollar bulls are being like, yeah, that looks good. It's, 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 it's fading back. Yeah, but you look like dog crap against everything else. You have to acknowledge, I'm a dollar bull, but I'm not so stupid. I've learned the hard way. So stupid that I'm so dogmatic that I ignore stuff. You can't be ignoring stuff in here in the market because other people are looking at these relationships. I like these people that say correlations don't matter, and then they're getting their rear ends handed to them. Because other people, and it's not so much correlations, they're looking at relationships among other pairs and other markets and saying, wow, well, if this is doing that and this is doing that, like the copper, the copper's had a nice rally. So that even aids to what's happening here in the Aussie dollar. And then if we take a look at the gold market, it was above 1150. Let's go a little bit here. You see, now we've already made that run up to 1157. And 1159 is a breakout. And they're 1153. Everything's pointing towards these commodity currency moves, which is only working against the dollar. And as long as gold's above 1150, that's supportive for the euro. I mean, if you don't, if you have to, you have to understand how this stuff works. That's why, I, honestly, I laugh at all the people that are just technicians because they don't get it. They'll never be as good as the people that that use a confluence or a combination of technicals news and understanding price structure, the way a market starts to like bend bend down and, and then it loses its grip and, and, and starts to accelerate. They won't they don't understand they laugh at news economic releases, but they're the ones that are getting the rear end handed to them because they don't understand that the Euro being able to survive the FOMC minutes and get above twelve eighty three is key. And it's why I would I wouldn't sell the Euro when it went up to 1335, it backed down 20 pips from that area. 
but I said, I don't have a good risk reward. Then we came up to 1345 here, and I was talking to someone. They showed, I go, you know, it might fade it from here. I already shared the chart 1335, but, and it did fade about 25 pips, 27 pips. But you're playing, you're, I was telling that person, I go, there's people that are going to be on the other side of the market, and they're going to buy those dips. And it's a Friday. And same thing, the people that only trade charts, they don't understand all that stuff. They only know what they know. Okay, fine. But you got, it takes experience. You use your experience to kind of put things together. And while I was saying the same thing with the Aussie dollar, I'm glad. I guess I'm glad they were so difficult FOMC minutes because I would have been selling the 7260. I was determined about that. And I got wrapped up with the euro. I did notice it later on the day. I said, hey, it's above the 7260, but uh, I think it was 72, 72 at the time. I go, I can't mess with it. I'm so glad because right now, I'd be down, what, about 60, 65 pips. And I'd be like, you know, trying to figure out. But you have to understand, now gold isn't too far away from a break. Gold's about $5 away from an outright breakout. I don't, I don't give a rat's you know what about gold, but you got to respect it.